How's it going guys? Chris back here again. Today we're going to be continuing our draft with Ikoria. Um, honestly, I'm really happy with the deck. It doesn't have a lot of rares, doesn't have any mythic, has one mythic, no rares, a lot of uncommons, a couple commons. Like I said, I'm insanely happy with it. It's honestly probably one of the better decks I've drafted, I think. Looking at it without seeing any of the game so far, I'd say it's probably, probably is. This is too greedy to keep. We have a lot of early draw. Well, I'm going to actually keep this. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. I know I said I wasn't, but I talked myself into it because... We technically do have a turn two play. We even have a better turn two play now. We won't be able to mutate these guys in very fast, but our tempo is going to be strong enough anyway, so. So they're blue green as well. So what did we do differently in this draft as opposed to other drafts? Well, I think our mana base is significantly better than it would be normally. Like, if we get our mutate stack going, it's going to be great. So they can attack in here. We don't have anything to say about that. I'm not even going to block the 1-3, because I don't want my creature to die. We have 5 mana next turn. That's more than... We technically have like six mana next turn. It's more than they have, so. Even though we take a hit. We'll still be okay. I like where we're at. Root. So I don't think we block here.
we have a scary mutator now. Every time we mutate, we get a double bounce. So they can mutate onto that. Return a permanent. They don't have any. They use one fight spell. No. Well, better fight spell. Is that a nightmare beast? That is a nightmare beast. Hmm. Mm. We're gonna stay back on defense. I would like to have a parcel beast for this deck. It's a good card. So we're just looking for card draw at this point. We have a good options. Good few options among our deck. We have... Of one mind, we have two copies of that. We have two adventurous impulses, two anticipates. And I think that's it, but six card draw spells, we're bound to hit one eventually. I don't think Jeff Rawls was in our roles, was in our pod. But I may hype this deck up too much. Because I think it's a good deck, I just think we're a bit stalled at the moment. Oh, this is funny. This is so, so funny. Do you have a removal spell? Thank God you don't have a removal spell. Over. We literally bounced their entire board. Everything is bounced. This way we can play our other pouncing shore shark next turn. So if they go out big, they went out big, which is actually kind of cool. As long as they don't go for anything too crazy, we can just pouncing shore shark everything they play. Which is a bit messed up to be honest, but... Like, if they only have one creature to get... Mm. Shuffle that one back into your library. 
I don't want you to be playing that kind of thing. Resolve. Resolve. This is just mean. We have four, four bouncing great short sharks. <laughs> They discard last turn. Humber Naturalist, Migratory Great Horn. Okay. I mean, I'll still mutate onto it. Hmm. It doesn't remove its ability, so. We could have attacked in there and gotten three damage. Might have been worth it. Our opponent does not like mutating their creatures. There's a draw two. There's a draw one. I kind of want to do it that way. Anticipate is gone. Thorn Falls is gone. Over. Why did I tap that one? I have been trying to punt this game away. No block. We had the win. We had close to the win, didn't we? We didn't have the full win. Why am I making this game so hard? Okay, now we're going to have to start chumping. Did I lose myself this game? 
I hope I did not lose myself this game. I tried so hard and got so far. <sighs> Where the spark trailer hits hard these days. So block, 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 take three, assume there is no pump. A good mutate could still help us with this game. We have two migratory great horns in the deck. <sighs> we rose so high and fell so far. <sighs> so close. So close. <sighs> Just disappointed myself in that performance. We did not do what we were supposed to. There was a line to win that. I am 100% sure there was a line to win that. And we missed it, wherever it was. It was probably with uh, the 7-7 seven, seven mutator, Archipelagore. There was probably a better way to play that. And it was probably to bounce everything our opponent owned. Yeah, I'll take this. Got a cheaty land. Gonna start the game at 21 instead of 20. Because that's just how we roll. Do you have a turtle? <sighs> but it didn't have a turtle. You know what that means? It means they're bad at game. Everybody that doesn't have a turtle is bad at the game. That's my opinion on it anyways. So get out of Symbiote. I think that actually does reduce the mutate cost. Because it's casting modified. <sighs> I will buy your bluff. I like all of these cards. I guess Symbiote is the worst card in our... So you can cycle it now if you want. Escape Protocol has a purpose now. Except there's nothing to a blink, so there's that part of it not having a purpose, but <sighs> Rawr. So if they have like a combat trick that lets it survive, that way we didn't have to figure out about it during combat. This is also the first set to introduce the, um, no, not, probably not the first, but one of the sets I remember most for the mechanic where there's a Deadeye Navigator something. Not a Deadeye Navigator, a Deadeye something that basically, um, Uh, the trick to it is that it 
de will destroy a creature upon entry onto the battlefield if your opponent Discard that, I guess. Yeah, we can win this a fair way. Just pouncing shark, pouncing shark. Uh, basically, if a creature has taken damage this turn, you can have it killed with... Our opponent has had enough of our shark-based shenanigans, and they have conceded out of the game. That's what I wanted to happen in the first game. Didn't happen, which was sad. And I'm sad that that's the way it happened in the first game, but the second game proved that I was not wrong in my assumption that shark-based shenanigans could have such an effect. Sure. Hopefully, Adventurous Impulse will find us a land that can produce blue mana. And after we have a land that can produce blue mana, we're off to the races. Symbiote Shark Shark. Never didn't. Never didn't have it. We backdoored our way into our Pouncing Shark combo. Which is cool. And now we can Pouncing Shark our way to victory. I forgot to leave up mana to do a pouncing shark combo, but opponent didn't have anything at the time, so oh, this is really bad for them. We have to anticipate. Not a creature, so we can't attack with it. This is bad because the mole makes you mill every time it enters. So while we're killing them with damage, they're killing themselves with mill. Although the three cards won't actually add up to the remaining 26 in our library, but... It's just our infinite sharks are hard to deal with. Root. Yeah, we're just going to set up the same combo. So I'm actually going to cast a full price shark here. Because I can just mutate on to the symbiote. to give the other shark haste and we can deal 8 damage and that's our plan and our opponent has liked our plan enough to concede out of the game this is how I expected this to go I 
I was kind of sad when it didn't happen this way. So cliffs on one, symbiote two, shark three. If we don't need to use our shark, we won't. But I'd like to think it's shark time soon. Never mind. Opponent, you should know that it's shark time. Good thing about having the cocoon is that we don't actually have to um, mutate onto our symbiote. Mm, discard the terrible land. Mm, discard the terrible human. Take action. The squirrel is gone. Pass. We have enough mana to mutate again. Ugh. Goodbye, anticipate. Over. I think I'm going to cycle here. Correct choice was odd. Discard the land. Mm, discard the great horn. Over. Let's draw two. Pass. So we can rolling rock slide it next turn. We do happen to have an even removal spell. <laughs> it seemed like they had a pump spell. Yeah.
Well, that's unfortunate. It's even worse. I'll pass. I guess there's an argument that I should have waited last turn instead of attacking in, but I kind of just wanted to make sure they had it. Because if they didn't have it, they would have had to chump. No blocks. I am one mutate away from murdering you, so... No reason for me to make any risk. That's what you want to do with your time. That's fine by me. Pumping a bushwag. Kinda fine. So... I think we just go for the greedy play. Well, not the greedy play, the, um, the line that has the least chance of backfiring. Well, that was rude. I kind of also wanted to take out the Grera Grift, but the Grera Grift, I would have had to attack in lose a creature, and then there still would have been a chance that I wouldn't have gotten there. Which I wasn't really willing to take the risk for. They're being conservative now. Which makes sense. Hmm. If able, okay. That's actually a cool use of that combat trick. We were bested. So we've entered into final hour territory. But I think the deck I drafted is a good one. I just don't know if I have the skill to make it as good as it could be. Because I feel like our games are actually pretty close. There's just a bit of overconfidence and a bit of zealousness that doesn't really translate very well into these tempo-like strategies. So even though... The deck isn't performing as well as I've hoped it would. I'm not counting it out because I'm pretty sure it's not as bad as I think it is. It's not as bad as it's performing, it's just pilot error. I don't feel so bad about drafting two um, I remember this card's annoying. Never didn't have it. It makes something unblockable and when you have these kind of big creatures in the format Having an unblockable creature is just not where you want to be. I 
I mean, it is where you want to be if you want. You have the unblockable creature, but I generally do not have the unblockable creature, so. Over. Mm, I'll need another green one. Then of one mind to protect us from discard. My pile is stronger than yours, at least at the moment. Of course, we have a better ramp package. Although I'd imagine they have migratory great horn as well. Yeah, we can save our bounces for later. 7-7 seven, seven is where it's at. We have Anticipate to discard, so... We'll make him play... The things. Rude. Decline. So we have two seven sevens to their one seven seven. That means we're winning. They can mutate onto it, but we don't really care about discarding at this point. It's better off as a blocker anyways. Yeah, they just die now. Actually, maybe not. Rude. How much mana do I have? So I think under decline. Wait, oh, we can mutate onto it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Look at that mutate ability stack sometimes. So it doesn't really matter what they do here. Their creatures tapped. If they get two creatures, we'll just tap them or bounce them. If they get two removal spells, we can... That's actually a little tough. So, you will put that back in the deck. You can have everything else. Resolve. Resolve. Now we... Under. Uh, 
decline, take action. Just throw Luke in the mix. <sighs> it's the first time we cast him, so I can't complain. Our opponent's deck and our deck were trying to do very similar things, so... Showing off that we have a Mythic in the mix kind of makes me feel a little better. Even though it's absolutely pointless. So, still on the wire. Occam's Razor has reached its end, and it will decide whether or not we keep playing, or whether or not the game will end. I hope we keep going. I am proud of this deck. I want it to do well, but every time I say I'm proud of this deck and that I want it to do well, it disappoints me, so I don't want to say that kind of thing out loud too much, but I do think we are in a good spot. Don't run falls forest into anticipate. <sighs> The Black Mutate 1-1 one, one actually could be really bad against our deck. Cause, well, I guess it's not too bad. Most of our things are 1-3s, so... It might be Rogues. Rogues has some stuff in Ikoria. So we want to land here, ideally. Although passing up a pouncing great shark. What kind of player would I be if I did that? All right, we had to pass up that one. I had no choice. Don't at me for it. I know I would have gotten to the sandworm pretty quickly with all of these migratory great orms, but we don't have the mana to do it at the moment. We just really need to find another land source, preferably a red one, so that we can hold up Rumbling Rock Slide. Our opponent has had a lot of time to play cards, and I don't know what has happened. And why they are not, but I guess Symbiote there would have done the same job as a Humble Naturalist. I played the Humble Naturalist because it let us go into Pouncing Shore Shark. Alright, mate. Show me your combat trick. Because I don't care if this guy dies. Go, go, Polly Wage. Guessing Menace and Lifelink? Yeah. Two good combinations. No attack, because we can pouncing shark during their combat. I have a symbiote. He does not look like Venom, to be honest, but... I guess he is. This is Venom. He's got red eyes. Might be Carnage. I guess Rockside goes away. Luca makes a pretty good target in the hand, so I might be able to keep my Pouncing Great Shark, which I would very much like. 
Yeah, come on. You know you can't make a responsible magic choice. Choose Luca. Even though there's no indication I will ever be able to cast it. Mm. Goodbye, symbiote. Under. I'll take another red source. Maybe Luca was the right choice. I had not anticipated being able to cast it next turn. They gotta have a removal spell. Why would you play Grim Dancer? That makes zero sense. Just play that. Goodbye, Island. You're not needed. Getting a secondary stack up. I'm one mind. I like it, but I can't afford it at the moment. Goodbye, Grim Dancer. You were on the battlefield for a brief period of time. If our opponent does not have a removal spell, we win this game. 100%. There is no negotiation in that regard. Goodbye, Mount. Four 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 well four three four three seven seven. I wanted to save the archipelago, but our opponent seems to not really want to play into this. They have eight cards and you gotta play something. Jump blockers would probably be the best option, but... I guess even that at this time is not too appealing, is it? Yeah, I think Grim Dancer was probably the right play. You don't have to ask that you do. <sighs> it's 
It's actually going to trade in the Grim Dancer for a shark. Insane. So we have four, six, eleven of our seventeen lands on the battlefield. I think we can pull through with this. Why did you go under? Ah, I see. I see, I see, I see. To keep the five toughness. That way I can't just wander in with my pouncing shark. So... One pouncing shark. Yeah, I'm going to make you trade for that. So, few mutations. So we've used three of our four sharks, and all two of our of our migratory great horns. <sighs> this is bad. I think they've stabilized. Do you have multiples? That's actually kind of cool. That feels good. We would have gotten a few more essence symbiotes. I think that would have helped the deck out a bit. Although I do like our rampy boys as well. They help our of one minds be useful, I guess. They are working hard to kill us. Although, we're probably the ones that are going to kill ourselves. Let me see, five, seven... Okay. We have a plan of attack. Yes. Another shark has arrived. What are the last two cards in my deck? I will take that.
tell me you have something. Please, Nightmare 2021, tell me you have something. If they have nothing, I misplayed. This is literally all I have. No! We've lost. Let the record show we didn't lose to our opponent. We lost to ourselves. Why did it have to be the second card on the bottom of the library? You can't stop this opponent. Well, that is it. It's the end of our journey. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching. Remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, leave a comment if you're feeling up to it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.